What's up, Nick? How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited today. Yeah, we're excited to have you. So, like, what are you doing right now? Like, right now, at this very moment. <laughs> at this very moment, um, hoping that my kids won't burst into the room and, and start <laughs> screaming and yelling. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Do you have anything yeah. planned, fun for this uh, for this day after this? Uh, I don't know. It's a nice day out here in in North Tampa, so I, I might actually go take the dog out for a walk or something like that. So some something cool outside, get a little bit away from the keyboard. That's what's up. You should have got away from the keyboard and came in studio, but we won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Okay, so do you know what's about to happen? I'm going to guess some R&B songs from the 90s. <laughs> exactly. Technically, I was alive, but yeah, let's do this. <laughs> yes, right on. Okay, so we're going to be playing That's My Jam, 90s R&B edition. Hey, guys. Anthony here, the producer of the Stats on Stats podcast. And I just wanted to add a quick note here that Jordan and Tiffany pulled off a miracle this week. They actually got uh, the one and only Dre Scott to do the vocals for this week's That's My Jam. So I just wanted to pause here and give him a quick shout out. Thank you so much for doing that. Anyways, let's get back to the show. Again, Jimmy Fallon, I feel like you're ignoring us. It's all good, though. All right. So here are the rules. We keep changing them, by the way, like eventually we'll get them right anyway so here are the rules <laughs> we are gonna play four songs you have until the end of the song well actually we'll just play the whole song f it so we're gonna play the whole song and then at the end you have to guess either the name of the song or the name of the artist if you okay. get both of them that's a total flex but the mm. points are the same you can only get four <laughs> points but i mean whatever okay so are you ready <laughs> yeah let's do it <laughs> all right Song number one. You know how I do, and you know how I flow. I flow. I get your name and number, cause I like your steel. Oh, hey. And I dig the way you move. You move. The way you do like your thing. It, baby. baby, you can bring it on. Oh, you can oh, swing it this way. You stay, you stay no. on my mind. Think about oh. you all the time Got to get to know you well If you kiss then I will tell Boys to men? Okay, no <laughs> But you get you get three guesses Okay Uh Uh I don't know I Uh <laughs> I couldn't. I, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of other 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 groups that I know. I know. It, I know it's not like Run DMC. No, but, it's not. Go ahead and bust him uh, on that one. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> All right, Tiffany, so you want to go ahead and tell them what song it is? Uh, it is 702 Stilo. Oh yeah. See, I don't even know either of those. <laughs> Do you need your wife to come help you? Because you told us her I, bag is deep. Yeah, she she would probably know all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Song number two. Well, I try to tell you so, but I guess you didn't know. As the sad story goes, baby, now I got the flow. So it's Return of the Mac, right? Yay! Yes. Yes. <laughs> hey, that was uh, okay. I don't know who sings it though. That's okay. You already got the yeah. point. Go ahead and give him that <laughs> ding ding thing. <laughs> hey, hey. Okay, okay. We on a roll now. We cooking. We cooking. <laughs> All right. Song number three. Every man wants a woman that can always keep him in the mood. It's a deep cut. And I'm the kind of girl, so this is what I tell my dude. I tell him to kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the escape beat, just kick it, just kick it, just kick it. Yeah. Time to kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Is uh, party on down to the escape beat, just kick it, just kick it, this is just kick jam. it, just is this, uh, kick it. Is this is this voice to men? No. <laughs> <laughs> He really likes Boys to Men. Now I feel bad we don't have a Boys to Men song. Yeah. 
All right. Buzzer, please. I need the buzzer. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It's okay. We got one more song. I think you might get this one. All right. Song number four. It's not boys to men, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. No, I'm ready to love to love forever. Hey, love now. Come and love me forever more. I'm ready. Anthony, you know the song? I'm ready mm. to love you, to love forever. Forever. Hey, love now. Come and love me forever. One, one out of four, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, look. What kills me about this game? What kills me about this game? is we're talking to tech people. I would have been on my phone <laughs> Googling the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I don't know. This looks weird, though. Like, <laughs> I would be like, I'm just thinking really hard. <laughs> it's the integrity, though, the integrity. I, sh I mean, really, I should have just put, like, Shazam up here and be like, Shazam. <laughs> Dude, I'm just saying. So I'm surprised no one's done it yet. Is that See, allowed? Is that allowed? I mean, I would have done it. <laughs> Is it allowed? No, but like, who needs integrity when you want to win? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll get down to, you know, get down to business. The reason people actually come here. So if you're new, welcome. If you already know the vibes, welcome back. I'm Jordan, aka J, aka Big Steppa, aka The Chosen One. Mm -hmm. And I'm here with my co host. And I'm Tiffany B. We're excited you're here today for another episode of the Stats on Stats podcast, where we get to talk to professionals in the cyber technology and IT spaces. Speaking of those leaders, we have someone here with us today, and I'm going to let him introduce himself to our listeners, tell us where he's from, where he currently resides, how long he's been in the space, and what his current role is now. Sure, yeah. Thanks, everyone. I'm Nick Gibson. Uh, I currently am the CEO and founder of Gibson Cyber. Um, I'm originally from Michigan, but I've this month will be the, my 10th year anniversary down here in Florida. So I've been calling Florida my home and will probably do that for the rest of my life. Um, and I have two kids and a, and a loving wife down here. And um, I came from a background of, of military uh, and then moved into to cyber and kind of worked in the, in the DoD for a long time. But I saw an opportunity uh, in the last year where small businesses were getting attacked a lot more often. So I decided to kind of branch out on my own venture and, and start my own thing. And it's been going really well. Awesome. So I actually have a quick question. Yeah, absolutely. You said you're from yeah. Michigan. I don't think I actually knew you were from the Midwest. So yeah. you are didn't you... hear my voice? No, no. Sounds like I talked to my nose. <laughs> no, not at all. OK, so I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah. University of Michigan or Michigan State? Uh, U of M. Mm. Even though I lived outside of Lansing, I'm a U of M fan for sure. Really? <laughs> what is that? Go blue, right? Go blue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. Thanks. Yep. Go ahead, Tiffany. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You've already told us a little bit about yourself, but why don't you go ahead and kick us off and tell us your origin story? Where'd you start? Sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I did six years in the army as an infantryman. So big, big grunt, didn't really have a lot of tech experience, but I got into radios and stuff and kind of wanted to explore that when I got out, um, bounced around in a few different kind of majors in college, but ended up finding a veterans only boot camp for cybersecurity. Uh, and I got into that. And six months later, I had a job in, as a SOC analyst in cyber. Uh, working for ReliaQuest, which is, you know, a big, huge company now. Um, but back, you know, this was eight years ago, uh, they were still a startup <laughs> around here in Tampa and uh, really cut my teeth there and and then was able to reenact my clearance with the DOD and get back into um, doing contracting work. And that's where I, I met I met y'all. But um, I, I did, I, I, after, after we, we worked together, I left and went to a contract, um, where I worked for cyber command and I, I built a sock for their, their, um, their cyber training environment. Uh, so they needed, they needed malware to stay in and, uh, or a known malware to stay in and unknown malware to stay out basically. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the job. But yeah, I, after that, I worked for a couple other like MSSP or MSSPs. And then, yeah, in 23, February 20th, uh, last year, 2023, 
I just started noticing, I started getting calls for, from small business, business owners, like solopreneurs, like, Hey, I've been hacked. Can you help me? And I'd have to turn around being, you know, not my owner of my own company, turn around to my company and going, Hey, can we help this person? And they go, Oh no, we don't make it. They don't make enough money for us. We can't help them. Gotcha. And I hated like having to tell them that. Mm-hmm. And, and so I wanted to st- start a business that focused on, you know, solopreneurs and small businesses under 20 employees that normally in a cyber world aren't even like thought of as a blip on the radar, but now they're being, because of COVID are being much more exploited at a, at a exponential rate. Got it. So you saw some gaps in the market and decided to take that and build your own brand. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what are, what are some of the biggest challenges for you when you found you started building your business? Being a business owner, that is a, big, <laughs> is a pretty big challenge. Like, uh, I, I just, you don't, I, you don't realize how much work it actually is um, to start from scratch and build something out of nothing. Even if the, the idea has been out there before, like, you know, MSSPs have been out there for a long time mm-hmm. and, but there's no real framework for how to do it exactly the way that you're doing it. So you just kind of have to figure that out. And for me, that's like, it's, it's, it's challenging. It's, I like, it's, well, I, I like it in the challenging way, but after a while, you're like, I'm just tired of figuring stuff out all the time. Like, can it just be like figured out already when I get there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I so that was, that's just the biggest challenge is just trying to figure things out on a day to day. I feel that real quick. Anthony, is that how you feel? <laughs> Are you putting me on blast? <laughs> I'm just asking a question. Isn't the show business? Ain't you a business owner? Yes, absolutely. 100%. We you, blow up his DM, so that's why I ask. One of my yeah. favorite customers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, Tiffany, you got it. All right. Well, it's a, um, it, for me, it's a hu- it would be a huge change to go from just, I'm doing cybersecurity, being really technical, and then, okay, now I'm starting my own business. So were yeah. there any type of foundational trainings for you business-wise that you shifted into to take to make sure you were prepared for this move? Um, there was stuff that I did afterwards that I probably should have done in the first place. Um, it, getting into like a networking group and starting to like start to get good at networking. That's what I should have done um, beforehand. Like you can, there's a lot of different ones out there that you can get into, but uh, like a business focused networking or like a social networking Mm. group, but like a business one where you're making connections and trying to grow business that way. Mm -hmm. That's just something that's not taught to us in the cyber field at all. Like we don't really need to network unless we're getting a job, right? That was something that I didn't even realize how valuable of it is, valuable of a resource it is for business just to be able to network. Gotcha. And now I wish I would have known that a lot longer gotcha. or a lot sooner in my journey. Uh, did you pick up any mentors along the way? Yeah, a couple of them, um, not even in the cyberspace, but just in general, like small, starting their own small business, that mm-hmm. sort of space, because I, that's where I knew that I was lacking in my knowledge was, you know, just how to start and run a small business. I can, you know, we can run operations in uh, against Russia and China all day and do forensic investigations and all this other stuff. But they're like, all right, so how do you do employment taxes? I'm like, mm. oh, first off, you have to pay for like, I didn't even, I, I didn't even realize that employment was taxed. Like it was crazy. <laughs> or, and yeah, how much, and, and how much, how much is taxed as a small business is ridiculous too. Mm-hmm. And you have to track it all. And that's just something that no one really is like telling you. They're like, Hey, make sure you do your, do your books, but not make sure you literally track everything that happens in your business ever. Like any penny that moves out of your bank account needs to have a paper trail against it. <laughs> What's in our account right now? <laughs> Girl, get out of our pockets in this episode. So oh, I actually, no. I have a question though. Let's go back to the networking piece. So naturally, like, how do you identify? Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Like, what has that journey been like for you to communicate with people? Oh, I'm an introvert for sure. Like, I, I always tell my, I tell my wife all the time that I got into IT to not talk to people. And now that's like <laughs> all I do. Yeah. Cause that's what generally you always thought about IT, right? Everyone's in a dark room and no one talks to each other. And I'm like, that's the role for me right there. <laughs> um, and it, that's just not how cybersecurity and IT works nowadays. 
it's part of the business decision. You have C-suite um, members that are talking about cybersecurity operations to the board, you know, directly. They're they're no longer just like an add-on or like part of a report. So it's become a huge deal. And now the cybersecurity operators like ourselves have been brought out into the light, I guess. Like they flip the sl- switches on, flip the light switches on in the sock. <laughs> and now we're like, oh, we got to like talk to people and stuff. Yeah. And it's good. It's good. And, and it's good for us as people, as, as people to grow in our career, because if we're going to grow in this field, you're going to eventually have to talk to people. And that's, I think something that I would have probably told myself in the very beginning of my cyber career, like get better at just talking to people. And then networking comes better, comes after that when you start your own business, but get better at just com- conversing over multiple different forms of communication. Like for some reason, I have very big phone anxiety. Like I have mm. anxiety of talking on the phone. I don't know why I'm talking over zoom. Maybe it's cause I can, it's fine or whatever, or talking over uh, any other platform where I can see the person I can see their reaction and how they're acting and like their mannerisms towards me, but the phone doesn't provide me that. So I don't know if they're taking like, like, like Tiff laughing right now. I know that she's like <laughs> laughing. Like, like you're laughing and you're, you're having a good time. But I'm, if I'm on the other side of the phone, I don't know that you're laughing. I don't know that you're smiling. Mm-hmm. And it like gives me anxiety. So put, trying to push through through that introverted anxiety and just going, I just need to do it because that's just how it, it just needs to happen for X, Y, and Z is something that I wish I would have just gone ahead and did or learned when I first came in. Yeah, you actually made a really good point about visual cues, because that's something like you talking about phone anxiety. That's something Mm -hmm. I kind of have a little bit of, too, because I'm just like, bruh, do you like me or nah? But like, (laughs) if you can see somebody like you said, smiling, laughing, you're like, oh, this is this is the vibe right here. So that's a really good point. That is a really good point. I'm glad you mentioned that. Dang. I'm sure other people are dead, thinking about dead that. silence on a phone like kills me. Like it just goes dead silent after you're like done talking and you're like, oh, I'm just going to go die now. And that's when you crack <laughs> one of Tiffany's stupid jokes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. I'm a little I'm kind of the opposite, though. Like have no idea why. But yeah, if I'm on the phone, I'm, you can't see me. I don't care. But once I get into this podcast realistically and like everybody's on me where all the eyes they can see me so it's interesting to hear let me people let, can't get in, on a phone and talk let me tell you something about tiffany though the what? reason she likes being on the <laughs> phone what? tiffany likes being on the phone because she literally will let somebody talk for 20 minutes and she won't say a single word this is not she's, about me she's one of those people like <laughs> That's why she likes the phone because people can't tell that she's put it down and is no longer listening and then jumps back on it like, ooh, girl, that's crazy. That's why she likes the phone so much. Um, Can I ask another question? Is that cool? My other question is actually like, is there anything you did to become more comfortable with like networking and talking to people? I want to know personally because Tiffany and I have been going to a lot of conferences recently trying to promote the podcast. Mm-hmm. And to be totally honest, I'd be like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> so like, what did you do to kind of make, make yourself more comfortable? Um, I started to get some, some like general lines. Like I guess that, that 30 second speech or your elevator pitch or whatever, mm-hmm. like get to get to know that really well and get it really down pat. Because if you do that, you can c- cut it up in your head and use it in, in part of your, in part of your speech to you, to new people and make you feel more comfortable while you're speaking. Mm. Like the, like, I don't know, for example, like mine is, you know, we're a, a, a small business cybersecurity company that focuses on uh, businesses with sensitive data under 20 employees. And I can cut that up to, to, to different things. Like if someone's talking about a small business or someone's talking about maybe it problems or something like that and be like, Oh yeah, I do this, that, and the other. And I can start going into my, sort of speech a little bit and it helps me feel a little more comfortable because it gets me go oh yeah i actually know, do know what i'm talking about awesome like, i like that i do too gets me i guess it gets me out of my own head puts me into a space where i'm just like yeah i know what i'm talking about i can just spout off this stuff this stuff that i've practiced before mm, I, I do like that that's good advice that's good insight oh man um so um like we're speaking about this complete change from you know 
I'm doing cyber, being technical, but now I'm a business owner. So for me, I feel like there's so many different uh, matters that you have to be concerned with um, mm-hmm. from where you are now. So uh, how has being a business owner kind of uh, shaped or reshaped your perspective about cybersecurity? I definitely think that uh, being a business owner has has shaped just my my idea of of how business works in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that goes into the cybersecurity business of, of selling cybersecurity, um, and, and just, I don't know, selling, just being a a service provider, right. Mm -hmm. Where there's, uh, what you have to think of when you're selling this stuff, you're not, the, the customer doesn't care about what tools you use and what technology you use. They don't care about how, what processes you use to do that. Mm -hmm. They just want to know, especially in the level that I'm at, like in the the solopreneur kind of level, they just want to know that their data is going to be protected and they're going to, they're going to comply with whatever compliance standards that they need, they need to do. For example, tax, all tax professionals, anyone that does taxes and does tax repairs has to now comply with the IRS's cybersecurity standards. And it's kind of like based on NIST, essentially. Now, as a cyber professional, you have to, and a, and a business owner, I have to explain that. I have to explain cybersecurity and why it's important to someone that has never even really worked, maybe even worked in like a large corporate environment, right? And I think that as a business owner is where was was something that I didn't even fathom about like i knew how to talk cybersecurity to c-suite executives and other people that work in the i don't know not even the tech realm but like in a in an office building and have general office tech ability right but when you go to like a small like even smaller entity like that these people may not even have ability to like open their email or know that office 365 and outlook are the same thing or the outlooks part of our, part of Office 265, you know what I mean? So I'll be I would be going into a meeting and be like, okay, well, what what kind of what kind of email system do you have? And they're like, Outlook. I'm like, well, that's not <laughs> that's not an email system. So do you mean Office 265? And they'd be like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> because they don't care. They don't need to know that stuff to be a lawyer, to be a to be a CPA, to be a uh, a bookkeeper. They just know to, how to do the do their jobs and don't really see the value in it as much because they never really had to do it before um like for you know covid changed everything it, it a cpa used to be able to do paper taxes still prior to covid now the irs is like we're not even doing paper taxes anymore you're going to be electronically filing unless you're abroad or something like that like it's only it's only like certain cases like they want you to electronically file now mm. because it's easier and it's a way to it's 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 a way to track the irs has a way to track you when you submit that trans that transmission you get they get your ip address and all the y'all y'all know they get Mm -hmm. they get all they get all your stuff when when you hit that button that says submit you know including your w2 but before that your tax preparer has to gather up all the data get send them your w2s and stuff they have to now house that information for x amount of years and keep it safe and it used to be in a filing cabinet and they do that. And the, the, that's just not how it works anymore. Gotcha. You need to have a digital filing cabinet in the cloud and that's behind a firewall and all this other stuff. We're going to have to start paying Anthony in cash. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are mentioning your services that you uh, give to provide to people. So why don't we get into that? Talk about yeah. what Gibson Cyber does. Sure. Yeah. So uh, Gibson Cyber, we provide a complete holistic security approach to to small businesses. We're not an IT company. We don't do things like host your email or or run your website or anything like that. We focus on securing your data and in you know the CIA triad, the confidentiality, availability, and integrity of your data. Um, I said that backwards, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, and and that's what it's not just about putting antivirus on your computer anymore. It's not just about, you know, having a fish, a filter, a spam filter on your email. It's about having endpoint security with user behavior analytics, monitoring any, any malicious out of, out of character behavior happening on your computers. Same with your emails, monitoring for all that, all that stuff. We, we capture 95% of the phishing through our, through our platforms 
And then we have the ability for our users to even small businesses to be report phishing to a cyber, to a security team. So we have a, you know, a 24 by 17 behind that. Um, and, and then we, and then we bring into the cloud services and this is where we, I think, differentiate a lot from other it and, and cybersecurity companies is that we're able to secure like office 65, Google workspace, G drive, Dropbox, Citrix file share, all these different cloud services that are being used prior to basically what we call shadow IT. They're being used outside of the IT's knowledge, IT com, IT's organization's knowledge. Well, now we're able to bring that in under the realm of all of cybersecurity so we can monitor everything that's going on in the business. If someone's uploading a file to Dropbox that's a client, we're scanning that file before it gets uploaded. Oh. If someone's um, like, for example, I have, a, we have, we do DLP, so data loss prevention as well. Um, so a lot of CPAs like this, where if, if we have, if they have a list of social security numbers and we're seeing it being sent, being downloaded by a, uh, an, I, I, by a user that's not part of the organization, we're, mm -hmm. st we're stopping that download and getting an alert on it. Oh, and that's just something everywhere. that normal IT's, normal IT doesn't really do that for smaller entities, right? But that's what that's what the whole the whole thing is. I I, t I tell my clients everyone needs to get into the cloud. Why would you want to store? There, I've had clients go, "Oh well, can you help me set up a server in my office?" No, <laughs> for a number of reasons, I'm not going to help you do that because you want your stuff in the cloud. What happens if? I mean, I've been in in situations here in Florida uh, working for the the DoD and stuff where we had to tarp up server rooms during hurricanes because all of our data is on a server not in a cloud that's terrible that's terrible like that's it, it that's a terrible business approach to to securing sensitive data like w2s and and people's personal information someone can just walk into your office and gank that thing right out of the <laughs> right off the wall and be like i got me a new server what are you gonna do about it nothing and and so yeah so we tell everyone to get into the cloud because we want not only do we want uh, your data away from any physical, you know, ability to get access to it, we want it behind things like Google and Microsoft security. I want Google and Microsoft to pay for your security, not for you to pay for your security, right? They have to deal with multi-billion dollar compliance standards and HIPAA compliance and all this other stuff. And all you have to do is pay the fee and upload your data. Ooh, mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. that. That's I'm over here learning some stuff today, <laughs> man. Yeah, people people don't think about that. That that Microsoft and Google have contracts with the government, right? Mm -hmm. So their cloud services are going to be to the standard of like every compliance standard that's out there. Wow. Because they want to keep those government contracts. Sheesh. So if you pay for if if you pay for Google Workspace or Office or, or, or the business version of Office 365, you're getting HIPAA compliant. CMMC compliant, you know, uh, cloud services. Now it, it also depends on you to make sure that your, your policies on top of that are compliant. Like if you have all of your, uh, your cloud data open to open to the public and it's showing all everyone's personal information that's on you, they can't stop that. But as far as all the hardware and stuff that goes into supporting that cloud service, it's all compliant already. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, Wait, go look, ahead and add. Yeah. Look, look, look. I'm like, I'm going to say something smart, but if it's dumb, take it out, all right? <laughs> Infrastructure as a service? There you go. Hey, Infrastructure okay. as a service. Ding, ding. Go ahead. Give me a ding, <laughs> ding. Hey, <laughs> all right, all right. Can I ask about the about the business model, or are you going to ask it? No, no, no. Okay, so something that you mentioned to us that I was like, that is super unique and low-key, like, People might steal your idea because it's it's really smart. But can you um tell people about your business model, the whole subscription thing? I feel like I gave it yes. away, but go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I mean, honestly, that that's part of my business model is being transparent. So all this is on my on my website. You can look at the my pricing and 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 subscription models right on the website because I want people to trust us. We're a cybersecurity company. I want that trust, right? So anyways, we have three models of sub subscription services. So we boiled everything that I used to do in the Department of Defense and we used to do the Department of Defense. I boiled it all down into three different subscription services at varying levels of security, depending on what you need for your business. So we have like a basic plan that just covers two devices. So like a computer and a phone. Um, but that's not just 
you know, the, the, the antivirus, that's that user behavior analytics too. So we're, we're covering anti-exploit, anti-ransomware, anti-malware, antivirus, anti-whatever, anti-phishing, all in one sort of, one sort of uh, 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 small package. And that's like $49 a month for, for that. And that's two, two devices. And then you move up to our, our pro plan, which is our, probably our most, um, most used one. And that starts covering email security. So you get a number of devices and a certain amount of emails. And we cover that same holistic approach with your computer and your phones. And then we bring in the email to cover it all together. So our, we use Checkpoint. I don't know if you've, ever, you've heard of Checkpoint. No. Um, they're, they're a security company based out of Israel. Uh, they're, so they're, they're known for their security and, um, and what they do, they provide a, a, a comprehensive solution that's only available to like corporations and MSSPs that go through their specific training. So I went through their specific training and I got this, this tool that isn't even offered to small businesses. Like they don't even have, they don't even do marketing to small businesses. And I'm bringing this amazing product that works all together. Like our system for our phone, our phone security, our computer security and email security, as well as cloud security, like Dropbox and stuff all talk together. Uh, if we're seeing uploads and downloads from one, we're starting scans in, in another to make sure that it's, it's being protected holistically. Right. Uh, seven, I, I, we always give the analogy of like a 10 layer cake, uh, where, Every layer is a harder is, is just another layer in front of an attacker to keep them secure. So you have your email comes in, email comes in that has a phishing link. We're blocking that beforehand. If it looks, if it was a really good phishing email and somehow makes it through our filters, we have we're, we're training the user. Uh, we're training our uh, every subscriber gets gets training uh, by weekly training emails sent to them. We're training them how to spot phishing emails, how to spot malware, because that's probably part of compliance standards one and two it's what should have been happening to small businesses in the first place they should be trained be trained on how to operate safely so and then if let's say let's say it's not get caught let's say that they, they do it, uh, end up clicking the link we have it covered on uh the downloads for our cloud services then we're like oh hey something's getting downloaded that has uh, mal that has malicious behavior associated with it we need to go look at it, it stops it and we go look at it Let's say that it doesn't, they don't download it on a computer and they just automatically upload it into like their Google Drive or it gets uploaded in the Google Drive. We're scanning that too automatically because it's more than just one solution anymore. You can't just have antivirus and call it a day. And you need to have a holistic layers, a layered approach, defense in depth approach for everyone from the smallest entrepreneur to the biggest business because everyone's data is just as valuable, no matter if it's in Bank of America or sitting at the local CPA. I really love this I'm approach. over here like, maybe we need to look at his subscription. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm like, I got a, uh, you know I got a computer saying? on the way, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hand that to you, Nick, yeah. and be like, take care of it. <laughs> yeah, we, need to, we need Anthony to give us the family discount though, to be able to afford Nick. <laughs> This is great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, just to give you a cap on what on our services at our, our most expensive service is two sixty nine a month. And that's that I mean, we're covering literally everything, uh every any any type of business communication that has data on it, we are covering and securing and making sure that it is compliant, uh available, um, and comp you know, all the CIA triad covered on everything. I love this. Not only are they giving you that holistic approach, everything, you don't even have to think about, am I covered? But then also you're getting training. Like you're literally giving yeah. them training to make sure in addition to, they don't actually have that social engineering part to, to, to. Yeah, we do. We do biweekly, like little clips out. Like this last one was like, did you know you can report phishing emails to us in two clicks? And it's just, you know, right click on the email and report phishing. Right. But people don't know that. So if they don't know it, how they're supposed to, how they're supposed to report it to us and then nothing gets reported to us. So we're proactive in, in our security. We're not just, we're not that IT company that takes your money and then you don't hear them from them again. We're, we're like, Hey, did you get any, you, I saw that you got this email and it came in and you downloaded it. We're, we're detecting it as malicious. Is this normal? Like on your activity all the time, constantly not to be like, in a hindrance or a business hindrance, but actually to be a business uh, enhancer because mm -hmm. uh, we've had people report, like, for example, 
when our when people download PDFs and stuff, our, our system sanitize those links so they can't be clicked on, like in the PDF. Well, lawyers have been reporting that they get more efficient work because the san they're sanitized already before they get uploaded to the courthouse, mm -hmm. and the courthouse has their own sanitization process. And if it gets kicked back, that just it, the, the courthouse will kick the the email the the messages back or the documents back if they have links. So our systems are already scanning that, removing that, making it more efficient, and they can report it. They can send it up in a lot shorter time. So it's kind of you know giving with both hands, which is pretty cool. You got some stories, Nick? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of, of course, yeah. <laughs> she, did, she, she took a pause on shaking the table to ask that question. <laughs> um, a couple of stories, yes. So uh, one of the first clients that we, we had was a, a, a small town CPA. And um, they contacted one of our, um, our, our larger competitors. And the larger competitor found, us, found me on LinkedIn and was like, hey, this guy is completely hacked so they like felt bad for him and but the, the they their company wouldn't take the take the work because it wasn't going to be enough money for him mm. so i ended up i was like yes of course so i go up there i i, well, I don't go up there i contact them and i i start working with them and it ended up being he got a phishing email a spear phishing email this is a solopreneur working out of his house mm. gets a spear phishing email says hey i'm a new i'm a new client here's my w2 please review it and send it back to me. So whoever this was knew that he was a CPA, knew that this was, by the way, it was April, beginning of April. Mm -hmm. So hot and heavy tax time. Mm -hmm. So I mean, everything was just set up perfectly for, for, for this attack to, to, to go off. So he downloads W2. Well, W2 or W2 is, P, is a PDF, has Java in the back, and that brings in a back door. Um, this gentleman was uh, of the, uh, he, was, he was an older gentleman, so he had, his desktop computer for like 15 years. Right. And he didn't have any cloud services or, or any sort of storage in, in any way. He stored all of his clients files right on his desktop, like literally on the desktop of his computer. <laughs> so when he opened it up, like all the files would be right there and it'd be like just gigantic wall of files. So when the attackers got access, I mean, he used, he used like on, on computer tax software mm -hmm. that's like encrypted but like he stored everything in his like downloads folder and is on his <laughs> on his computer. So it like the encryption was void at that point. But he did they didn't need to break and this is the thing, when they got access to the computer, the, the attackers didn't need to break into a software or break an encryption. They just went C D desktop. Mm -hmm. Oh, look everything. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. And they stole three hundred clients worth of data. And I mean, this is this is a guy who living the American dream. He has a really nice, like you know, six hundred thousand dollar house, really doing really well for himself, but just didn't have the security. He didn't thought, didn't think that he needed the security because he didn't need it ten years ago, and he does now. So, uh, what how he found out that he was hacked was that he started to send in the the yearly tax returns for his clients. And they started getting kicked back saying that they're already been filed. By the time that I got there, eight clients had already been filed uh, fraudulently using his uh, tax ID as the you know tax preparer um, saying that, you know, he's basically submitting these taxes. And then, of course, they changed the bank account numbers to theirs. <laughs> so they get the refunds. So, yeah, that was a tough call to have to call the IRS and say, yeah, I'm a CPA and I just got 300 people's clients or the data lost and they're submitting fraudulent claims huh? so he like had to get a new new cpa number i don't know what they're actually called but they're it's <laughs> like whatever whatever id tax preparer id that they have um they had to get a new one and yeah they had we had to send out an, an, a letter to all 300 clients saying that, that their data has been compromised and that they're working with the irs and things like that and the thing that really got me was the irs's answer on this phone call mm -mm. they were out they were like we were like yeah 300 people uh all this happened well I'll, i'm gonna be I'm, I'm doing the i was you know I'm, I'm on the call with them um as a cyber professional i'm like hey i'm gonna do this report and i'll send it to you which i did and they go okay we'll tell the fbi and they're like have a good day and they just hung up the phone what? <laughs> because and i was like wow that was <laughs> that was crazy <laughs> <laughs> and then I was, and I realized that I'm like, oh, it's because 300 people, they, they don't give a crap about 300 people. <laughs> like 300 people, the IRS is nothing. I mean, especially the FBI, when they're looking at hacks in the multi millions of people, like talk like Equifax, like that sort of thing. 
So 300 people's information is nothing. So what they what they do is they'll go as after they've reported, it, they'll get a time frame. So my report will come in and they'll get a time frame and any any claims in these in this block and against this time frame are null and void. And and then anything after this time frame is going to be voided. Is going to be valid with a new prepare ID. That's all they do. There's no life lock. There's no like sending any information out. There's nothing. So when that was a really kind of an eye opening story for me, or an eye opening you know event for me to kind of really dig into this business and and start it. Um, do you want to hear another story? So this has actually happened recently, a few weeks ago. Uh, we get called by in our in one of our networking groups. So you know networking. Uh, we get called by we get called by uh, 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 someone that works in a law firm and then says, "Hey, we've had a lot of fraudulent um, banking." transactions being happening lately and we're getting a ton of phishing emails so these and this is untrained people spotting phishing emails so you have you know it has to be just like blatant so we get there and um i start my triage you know doing doing my thing and uh come to find out they have an it department and they've been using like i don't remember what it was it was like a like a free or very cheap antivirus like a like a malware bytes or a, or a century pc something web root something along those lines and all on on, on, the, on the machines but the it guy wasn't detecting anything so he kept saying that nothing's wrong nothing's wrong nothing's wrong mm. well i come in and deploy you know my 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 good stuff <laughs> i deploy it all the good stuff and lo and behold on their banking on their bank in the laptop that they use for banking was a malicious macro that was running power exploit which mm. is a PowerShell exploit kit and can be used to weaponize macros and leverage that to manipulate the rest of the... So basically, they were on this banking laptop owning the rest of the network and just siphoning all of the information coming from any sort of spreadsheet or anything that was happening in Word, as well as the rest of the computer. How long did it take you to recover that? Uh, two hours. What? It was... <laughs> <crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah. <laughs> yeah see when you when you have someone like like us that know what we're doing and we, we can come in and go oh, all right this is an easy i mean this stuff was on it was all over malware it was all over virus total i mean virus total we we put we, we dropped the hash in and virus total look lit up like a damn christmas tree it was like just, <laughs> and i'm like ooh, you, you get that bright page of all red and you're like oh it, that's how bright it was and i'm like it, easily found by really any sort of normal business i a business cybersecurity solution but because he was a, an it person that may not have known to use anything different mm -hmm. than a cheap at home version of an antivirus it never did get caught and he didn't understand why we were coming in and we ended up finding all this stuff and he's like oh this is where this is the this is the gap that i'm trying to that i'm trying to to, to cover is that in traditional it and cybersecurity are two different things. Mm -hmm. It's like everyone's a doctor when they come out of medical school, but only certain people become heart surgeons while some people become general practitioners. IT is a general practitioner and cybersecurity is a heart surgeon. We're here to protect you. We don't do like like setting up, you know, servers or or running up like trying to make sure the printer's working in your office mm -hmm. that's not what we do we specialize in making sure that your data and your transactions and your client data are secure i gotta say something that was a word it needs a snap <laughs> that was a word <laughs> Ooh, that was oh okay go ahead tiffany i'm over here processing i was touched <laughs> <laughs> love what you're doing and I would love to know what your intentions are for the future of this business. Like, what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to really getting our message out there more um, and and starting to help more people. Uh, that's a, a kind of a, another way of getting more clients. But, <laughs> but, I, uh, but I also want to, you know, I want to start, I want to build a, I want to build a security tool eventually. And I want to start doing research and development so we can, you know, get ahead of these, these things for small businesses specifically, because as you see, we're getting spear phishing attacks on solopreneurs. So something's, something's amiss and we need to, we need to address it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my super, my super smart question. Um, it's really, really smart and complex. Why a fishy? <laughs> oh, uh, so, you know, I, I'm a big fisherman. That's what I enjoy doing. 
and I wanted a, a, a fish low. This is an angler fish, um, mm-hmm. the deep sea fish that, you know, glows kind of like, you remember finding Nemo when mm-hmm. they glows and yeah, same thing. Um, I wanted a, an emblem that kind of symbolized me as a, as like a person and I love cybersecurity and I love fishing. So an angler fish with a, a, a Wi-Fi light light is, uh, something that I thought was pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty well thought out. <laughs> Um, okay. I have a quick core question. Mm-hmm. So you're in cybersecurity. Somebody, somebody walks up to you, knows nothing about cybersecurity. They're like, how do I get where you are? What advice would you give to them? Um, start to study and find intro to cybersecurity courses online. There are a lot of free, free versions. Um, there are a lot of even cheap versions on Udemy. Um, but just start searching that. And then honestly, I, I behoove people that really, if they're really serious about this, look into doing like a boot camp. Um, a six to 10 month boot camp, it might be, you know, uh, um, you know, thousands of dollars. It will be definitely le- less than a semester at college, but um, gets you in, gets you job ready into this field in hands on practical knowledge. Um, that's how I started. I, I, te- I, I volunteer and teach at, at them at, at certain times. At, at night and i i just see so many when i'm when i'm out there rec- trying to hire cybersecurity analysts like i have before and i i come across people that have had uh that come out of college with an it degree and had come out of a boot camp with with uh you know a certificate or something like that people that usually come out of boot camps have are much more job ready for being a security analyst and being a junior pen tester than someone with just a, a, a like an information technology degree um, so I would say to to really look at investing in yourself and look at something like a boot camp to to do that in. Something there's a number of them out there. I won't I won't pick pick on one, but um, just invest in something that is going to make you job ready faster. You didn't even want to plug the one you you you. Okay, <laughs> all right, that's fine. Uh, okay, so something that you mentioned that I'm actually really glad you mentioned. Because I feel like when people think about boot camps, they're like, oh, I'm going to go to like this, you know, two week camp and I'm going to know everything. I'm going to take a test and people are going to think I know stuff. The fact that you mentioned that those longer, like six to 10 month boot camps exist. I really like that you mentioned that because I don't think a lot of people know that. And I don't think it's something that's really talked about. Yeah, you can't learn this field in two weeks or two or even two months. To just to get into to break into the field and be ready for a security plus exam, which is as y'all know is like the standard of a of a fresh analyst. Um, you you need to have something that's more substantial, taught by people like ourselves, you know, actual cybersecurity professionals doing the job instead of you know, a lot of times universities are two years plus behind in the industry. So, but we're but. Places that I I, I, I didn't plug it because I work for I, I don't know if I can. So uh, the places like I, I work for um, are hire people like me myself to come in and do the work. We just like to volunteer and uh, our time to come in and teach this stuff. And that's where I see people coming out and being so much more job ready and so much more just have the ability to do this work than you would anywhere else. He's dropping gems, boy. Like I almost feel like we should charge for this episode. <laughs> Anthony, can you tell us how to how to charge people to subscribe? Dang. And monetize it. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. Okay. I know Tiffany has a bunch of questions that she still hasn't asked, so Nope. About training, you just said yeah. that you teach some of those boot camps, but mm-hmm. I noticed also on your site because I'm nosy that you do lunch and learns. So, could you talk about how you're giving back to the community? Yeah, so lunch and learns came out of an idea of of my company just wanting to record our internal team trainings, and like we do, I do a weekly training where I sit down with the team and they just ask me or a subject matter question, subject matter expert questions on whatever topic we're talking about. So that, that kind of just spout out, well, why don't we just record these things raw and then just like throw them up on YouTube and for everyone to kind of learn from. Cause yeah, we would drop some like really, we'd have, we'd have like some really good truth bombs and then like afterwards be like, what did we say? I don't even know. I guess it's one more question about the business side of things. Mm -hmm. So once you start to scale out and really start to build your team, what are some of the qualities you look for in potential candidates? 
Um, I've always ever looked for one quality, and that's passion for the cybersecurity field. I think that it's passion. You can have passion over skill. Uh, I can teach you how to do how to how to uh, investigate in, in, in things into in a sim or you know run an EDR solution or or you know run a, a malware scan or something like that. But I can't teach you to get up every day and want to come in and just like comb through a, a text file full of logs and think that's fun. I think that's fun. I like doing that. It's like a puzzle to me, but it would probably drive some people crazy. So ha having the, the passion for this field and showing being able to articulate that passion, I think that's the second one too. So one thing, passion. Second thing, being able to articulate that passion. Mm. You need to be able to express to me in clear language how you want to be in this field, right? If you can't do that, I can't have you in front of a customer trying to explain cybersecurity principles to a client, right? And like we talked about before, cybersecurity and IT is no longer like hiding in the back. You have to have customer relations. It's just how, when you pick up that phone and you have to call someone at three in the morning and they're pissed off that they're, that they're already awake. And then you have to tell them, Hey, by the way, your company has ransomware. You have to be able to like keep calm in that situation because they're not going to be. Tiffany, isn't that something you mentioned in, so most people don't know this, but I'm going to say it. Most people don't know this, but Tiffany was a guest on a podcast like some years ago and something you mentioned was passion. You don't remember mentioning that? I do. Do you want to, um, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of your observations throughout the course of your career when it comes to people kind of lacking passion and, you know, the environment that it, that it creates? I was not prepared for that. <laughs> she didn't want me to plug her episode. It's the RSA conference, right? If you Google RSA conference, Tiffany Bryant, so she has a whole episode it's where so she talks bad. about passion and skills gaps, and it's beautiful. Oh Go ahead. It was her introduction to uh, to the media. Nope, I can't. Uh. Okay, so basically <laughs> she said when people lack passion, it just it causes the whole team to kind of deteriorate deteriorate a little bit right because when you see one person not excited to be there I mean that's is energy transference if you start to see one person mm -hmm. not excited about the job it makes other people it's like a domino effect but it's cool I'll go ahead and articulate that for her <laughs> yeah and I think that's really important because in this job it can be very grinding you could just be you could be doing the same thing every day or or you're in an investigation and it's like high stakes and super stressful and you have to pour through logs manually and they want answers now and and it takes time and and yeah it, it, just being able to you know comb being able to, to to cope with that and have that passion to get up every day and go yeah i that yesterday sucked but today is going to be better and we're going to we're we're going to go and you know investigate this Russian attack and you know save some American lives or whatever whatever gets you up in the morning I don't know flying on a helicopter and and you know drop down with your computer and then hack things and fly up out of the way I don't know but yeah uh, passion is just about what gets you up in the morning I think and if you have that for cybersecurity and you can express it that's what is really what I look for when I'm hiring I, I want to say something that is complimentary to both of you. So something that Nick and Tiffany both share is, I don't know if you guys do it intentionally, but you both are like really good leaders in the sense that your passion translates so well to other people that it just hypes other people up. Like that's, that's amazing. Cause not everybody can do that. I'm one of those people who can't do that. So I'm so happy to be around both ah, of you. Thank so. you. That's so kind well, thank you. you. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm gassing everybody up today. All right, go ahead, Tiffany. I know you got some stuff to say. <laughs> Hurry up, though, because Anthony is going to charge us extra. No, I, I just want to say thank you. Like, thank you for coming on here. Thank you for sharing your passion. Uh, thank you for thinking about, like, the small businesses, right? There are so many people who feel like, oh, I'm never going to get hacked. Nobody even cares about me. Nobody's thinking about me. Or I have nothing, essentially, to be hacked, right? And you don't yeah. have to have something they're looking for. They could just use your systems to do something else or to springboard to somewhere else. So people don't think about that and you're kind of protecting us. So I love this. Yeah. Thank you. 
yeah people don't uh, yeah no problem yeah people don't think like i i, I get the lot like oh well, my bank will protect me if something happens mm-hmm. yeah fdic will protect you a couple times until the <laughs> bank realizes that you just keep getting hacked and then they're like nah so i mean one time is fine but you know shame on you know first time shame on you for what is it that what, what what's that for, that saying first time shame <laughs> on me second time shame on you or so i don't know yes yeah put it put yeah, it on so, the screen and post yeah, put it on the screen yeah. <laughs> but yeah i mean and, and and that's that's what a lot we're trying to get to these small businesses that they're just because they're smaller their va- their their data is just as valuable as a big company it just it's just in a different scale nice awesome. that's dope Okay, so a question that Tiffany usually asks when we start to wrap it up. Are you open to connecting on LinkedIn? Should people connect to you or are you super secretive? No, no, connect to me. Um, you can see this QR code right here um, or just look up Nick Gibson on LinkedIn. And uh, I'm pretty active on there. So yeah, so feel free to, to reach out with me, connect with me, follow me. You know sure. nobody's going to scan that QR <laughs> no, code. Don't right? say it. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, mm, mm, is that this fishing? Right, right. Or what is this? Is this? <laughs> I love that. But. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Wrap us up, Tiffany. Thank you, Nick. Again, we're excited. We enjoyed your episode. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, to all of our listeners, everyone, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you spending the day with us. And all of our resources will be posted. And I guess we'll see you next time. And you're our first male guest. So, oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Bre- breaking barriers over yes, here. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. This was awesome. So, yeah, like she said, thank you. Endless gratitude. We definitely appreciate you. Yeah, I had so, I had so much fun. So thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs>